Anchor Make has come out with their second 3D printer, and they've decided to make it as easy to use as possible by giving it only one button. This is the Anchor Make M5C, and to a lot of people who are experienced in the 3D printing space will think this is a weird looking 3D printer. The biggest thing missing here is there's no screen on here. All it has is one button and an RGB light over here to kind of give you a little bit of status. The next weird thing here is how good it looks. All these rounded edges, smooth aluminum finish on here. This is very different from a lot of budget 3D printers we've been seeing for the last few years. This, I think, is a huge step forward for winning over more casual people into the 3D printer space. This is something good looking that you could put in the corner of your living room and wouldn't feel weird about it. Older Ender 3 style printers, those looked like a pile of machinery sitting in your living room doesn't look so good. But this is a really nice, well-finished machine. But first off, the thing we need to cover on every printer, the specs. The build volume is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters tall. That's a super standard build volume, so it'll be really easy to buy replacement build plates. And a lot of files you'll find online will print fine on this printer. The build plate on here is a dual-sided PEI sheet. This is the new best thing out there right now. All the good printers come with this. And if your printer doesn't have one, you should probably just get one. It's got a direct drive extruder on here, all metal hot end, so you can get up to 300 degrees Celsius. That way, if you put an enclosure around this, you could print some higher temperature filaments like ABS or ASA. But right out of the box like this, you'll be able to print all the normal filaments, PLA, TPU, PETG, at any normal temperatures. Assembly was extremely easy. It comes in two parts. There's the vertical part and then the bottom part. You stand it upright, you put eight screws in the bottom, and then you're ready to go. You do have to mount this spool foot holder up top, and that's four more screws back here. So 12 screws in total. After you power on the printer, you come to the most unique part of this printer. It's almost entirely controlled by your phone. And luckily, they've done a great job to create really the best 3D printer app I've ever used. It's really simple, really straightforward. There's not a bunch of advanced features in there, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. People who don't want to use an app to control your printer, this is probably not the printer for you. But a lot of people out there want an easy to use printer and you always have your phone around you. Right here, you can start doing things to control your printer. You could set in the no nozzle temperature. The printer will beep every time you tell it to do something so that you know that command was sent and received by your printer. You can change filaments with retracting and extruding. You can adjust the Z offset right here because it is fully automatic bed leveling. It has all these features in here. And next up, you can go to the explore page. This is where you can find files that are already sliced for this printer. So say I wanted to print out this turkey. You could from this print directly here on the app, you can say print it and it select which printer you want. It'll tell you how much filament it needs, what print time, and what speed it's sliced for. It, from here, you can send it directly to your printer and start printing. You don't need a computer or doing tweaking of slicing settings. For a lot of people who want to get into 3D printing but don't use their desktop computer all the time, mine is always right here, and so it's always really easy for me to use with a desktop, but a lot of people would prefer to just use a phone app to directly send files over. And that's kind of it. It's really basic. But that's kind of what this printer is all about. Really basic, easy to use printer. All these settings would normally be on a touch screen on the printer. And now it's just going to be on your phone. Under the settings tab, there are a few more little nice things. Button settings, since there is only one button here, you can adjust what it does at different times. I currently have it configured when the printer is idle. Single tap will print the last file loaded on the USB drive. Double tap to reprint the last file printed or hold for three seconds and it'll go through an auto bed level again. While the printer is printing, it will act as a pause play button. Double tap doesn't do anything and three second hold stops the print entirely. Another cool thing you can do in this app is share printer access. So you can share this with someone else who lives in your house or maybe it's at work and you want your coworker to be able to use it as well. On their app, they can access this same printer and both of you will be able to use it at the same time. Well, not print two things at the same time, but both of you be able to control it on your own phone. You don't need to give your phone to someone else so that they can control the printer. Next up, we can talk about print quality because that's really one of the most important parts of a 3D printer. This bright yellow filament is a little bit difficult to film, but it turned out great. I printed this large size Lego B1 battle droid from Star Wars. I did eventually break on this leg section because I kept removing it and reattaching it and I just need to re-glue this part back onto here. Here is the benchy test. 
This, the pink one is printed on the fast settings and the yellow one is printed on the normal settings in their slicer. The quality is really similar, but the time is very different. The pink one was printed at fast settings and printed in 25 minutes. The yellow one was printed with normal settings and took about 45 minutes. Now I know using different filaments is kind of cheating when trying to compare two different things, but they both look really good. I would call these a pass and you could get into the nitty gritty of comparing filaments and settings and, but both of these I would give a solid pass and the fast filament setting is really good for printing this quickly. And this isn't something pre-sliced by a manufacturer. A lot of times with these printers, they will give you a pre-sliced file that they did some a little bit of trickery with to make it go extra fast. This is using their slicer, you can make this file. Overall, I would give all of these files a pass. This is just really good prints out of a printer like this. All of these prints successfully printed, successfully fit together. Tolerances are really good. These Lego arms work and move correctly as they should. Personally, I think print quality nowadays is a pass-fail test, and this is a solid pass. Now there's no such thing as a perfect 3D printer and we do need to talk about the cons and a few of the downsides with this 3D printer. And the first one for a lot of people is that there is no screen on here. It's largely phone based. And really it comes down to a lot of people who use 3D printers now are used to having a screen on there and they're not gonna wanna give that up for this printer. But I also know there's a lot of people out there who don't want to have to use a computer desktop to be able to use a 3D printer. And they would love to be able to use an app to easily send files over here and control the printer. Over the last few weeks of using this printer, I've kind of changed my mind about it. I really don't mind it doesn't have a screen. I usually use my desktop anyway and send files over the internet and it prints and I come over and get the prints off and it just prints great. Another downside to this printer is that it's really not the quietest printer. It's one of the better looking 3D printers, but I wouldn't want this to be in a living space where I was. I wouldn't want this to be on and running in a living room where I was trying to watch TV or something. So if you have a closet to put this in or a garage, somewhere away from where people are living, I think you'll have a way better time with it. I also wish they had used a USB-A flash drive port on the side here instead of a USB-C. I don't own any USB-C type flash drives, but I own a ton of USB-A, which is kind of like the more common one, so I can't actually use the USB feature on here because I don't have any USB-C flash drives and they didn't come with any in the box. They came with a lot of great tools and I love that it comes in this little kit to give you all your tools ready to go, but there's no flash drive, so that feature can't be used. And without a USB drive in there, you can't go back and reprint old files. You can only reprint the last file that was printed. It'll store that in memory for a short amount of time, but if you send a new file over, it rewrites over that last file. The last thing to mention here is price. It is currently on sale for $360 with a coupon I have linked in the description down below. And with Black Friday coming up, they could have even more discounts coming. That is a really competitive price point, and there's a lot of great printers in that range. But I don't think this printer is really competing with a lot of the other printers on the market right now. This feels like a printer that's targeting casual users that aren't already in the 3D printer space. It's really nice looking and it's really non-technical. You don't need to and almost can't do a lot of the tuning that I personally would love to do on a 3D printer. This kind of takes it away from you. This is for someone who wants to just plug it in, download an app on their phone, and get to 3D printing and trying out this hobby. It's not for someone who wants to really dive into the technical side of things. They just want a machine to work. And this machine works really well. But anyway, I think that wraps it up. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments down below. As always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.